Our top story this morning, the U.S. and Germany will send dozens of tanks to Ukraine to aid in its defense against Russia. This after months of negotiations over who should send the tanks. NBC News Chief White House Correspondent Kristen Welker has more. In a major reversal, President Biden announcing he's sending 31 powerful American Abrams tanks to Ukraine, a move the Pentagon had resisted for months. Secretary Austin has recommended this step because it will enhance the Ukraine's capacity to defend its territory. The president making the move in concert with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who revealed Germany will send 14 Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine. It follows a dispute between allies, Germany earlier suggesting it would not send any tanks unless the U.S. did the same. But some U.S. officials had argued Abrams tanks were too difficult to maintain and operate and worried Russia could view it as an escalation. The president was asked if he was for Forced into the decision. Did Germany force you to change your mind on sending tanks? <laughs> Germany didn't force me to change your mind. We wanted to make sure we were all together. That's what we're going to do all along. And that's what we're doing right now. We pressed the White House about the new shift. What changed? What's changed, Kristen, are the conditions on the ground. Uh, and the kinds of fighting that the Russians are doing right now. But the White House acknowledging it could be many months before the tanks arrive. Still, the move receiving bipartisan support. What happened is a big friggin' deal. You got the Germans in the United States making a decision that's been long overdue. Meanwhile, looming over the announcement, President Biden again ignoring questions about the firestorm over his handling of classified documents. Sir, are the searches of your homes completed? All while the Washington Post reports, citing two sources familiar with the discussions, the National Archives is weighing, asking former presidents and vice presidents to search for classified material. No comment from the National Archives. All right, let's bring in Principal Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer, also with us, former U.S. Senator, now an NBC News and MSNBC political analyst, Claire McCaskill. She was a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Good to have you both. John Finer, I'll start with you. What was behind the decision? And also, what can be done in the meantime, given that these tanks will not be processed, prepared, and, and shipped for quite some time? Oh, well, it's a good question. There were really two main factors behind the decision uh, to provide the, the uh, Abrams tanks alongside our German partners. And they really are the two overriding uh, motivations that the United States and President Biden have had throughout this conflict. One is to get the Ukrainians what we think they need to be able to defend their territory. We've done that at every phase of the war, starting with the initial invasion when we got them uh, anti-aircraft weapons, anti-tank weapons that allowed them to defend their capital, got them artillery for the next phase of the war, uh, this standoff mm -hmm. in the eastern part of the country, and now uh, the focus is on these armored vehicles. But the second part of this decision is just as important to the president, which is maintaining allied unity. And we have been able to now announce uh, the deployment of these tanks in conjunction uh, with our key partners, the Germans, who will be providing Leopard tanks uh, in the immediate term with the Abrams uh, to follow as soon as the Ukrainians are able to maintain them and provide the logistical support. How do these tanks uh, change the battle strategy um, and, and how will it look different than it did before? And was the fact that you can cross into enemy territory or something else holding back on this decision a little bit? Uh, well, the president's been very clear. This is not a capability that, that we see or the Ukrainians see as something that would allow them to uh, go on the offensive into Russia uh, or against Russian territory. This is about defending Ukrainian territory and allowing the Ukrainians to take back territory of theirs uh, that has been occupied by the Russians. This phase of the conflict, uh, we have been providing the Ukrainians with hundreds of armored vehicles. Armored vehicles will allow them to do the types of maneuver warfare uh, that they believe uh, will enable them to start to retake uh, uh, parts of their territory that have been occupied for some time. That is the focus of the uh, next several months of the conflict for the Ukrainians. That is the focus of our security assistance in the near term. Uh, and that is the focus of some of the training that we are doing so that they know how to use this equipment uh, to fight in a way that can allow them to take some of their territory back. 
Claire McCaskill, um, you know, obviously there's a procurement process, training and shipping. I mean, these tanks are not for the current fight, but it's also a recognition that NATO, America and its allies, were in it for the long game. This is for the long fight. And I'm just wondering, you can take a question to John Viner if you'd like, but from your perspective, do you think the American people truly understand what's at stake here? And is it a problem if the answer is no? I think the majority of Americans get it. Uh, I do see new splits in the Republican Party. You know, the Republican mm -hmm. Party I served with in Congress was united in support of Americans' foreign policy. Not so much anymore. There's a lot of Republicans that do not want to give one more dime to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. really this decision reflects is the ability of Biden and other leaders of Democratic nations keeping it together. I don't care if, German, if Germany was leveraging to try to make sure that U.S. followed with tanks or not. What I care about is we manage to get everybody on the same page again. And we're not the only country that is beginning to have these cracks in support for Ukraine. This is going on all over Europe. So as long as we can keep this knitted up, uh, as, as John said, in, in unity, I think that's the best chance Ukraine has to ultimately prevail. They've done way better than anyone expected. Now it's going to be the Republican Party that may have this fall apart if they use defense funding as part of their agenda for trying to cut spending. So, John, uh, as you look at this war now, I, a lot of people viewed this move yesterday with the Abrams tanks in conjunction with Germany and the U.K. sending Challenger tanks as well as a commitment to something longer term in Ukraine uh, against the Russian army. Have you sort of conceded at this point? Or are you just facing the reality that, yes, this is going to go on for a while, as much as you'd like to see it end overnight with some kind of a, a deal and, and Putin leaving, that this is going to go on for many, many months, perhaps into years. So I think there are two important points here. One is uh, to echo what Senator McCaskill just said. The degree of unity that we have been able to maintain uh, internationally between the United States uh, and our, our European partners, but also beyond Europe, uh, to other countries in the world that are supporting Ukraine is, I think, above and beyond what anyone would have expected at the beginning of this conflict. And it's key to getting the Ukrainians what they need, both now and over the long term. But the second is, is the point that you just made, uh, which is uh, the tanks are emblematic of what the president has said is a long-term U.S. commitment. Uh, a commitment to stick with the Ukrainians for as long as it takes. And that's both an important signal to the Ukrainians that we are with them in this fight and will be with them in this fight, but it's also a very important signal to the Russians that they can't just wait us out, uh, that they can't just expect unity to fray or attention to shift, uh, that these uh, tanks will be delivered uh, when they're ready, not immediately, but at a next phase of the conflict, uh, perhaps. Uh, and over the long haul, uh, the United States is going to continue to do this with the Ukrainians uh, as long as their territory needs to be defended. Hey, John, good morning. Jonathan Lemire. At each different phase of this war, Ukraine's asks for weapons and equipment has changed as the conflict has changed. And understandably, President Zelensky is looking to get everything he can to try to push Russia out every inch of their country. No sooner did these tanks get committed yesterday, and certainly Kyiv welcomed them with a thank you, the asks have already started for fighter jets, that that's what Ukraine thinks they need next. Is that something the United States is willing to consider? So we don't make these decisions on our own. We make decisions about security assistance in, in close consultation with our allies and obviously in close consultation with the Ukrainians, uh, who are the ones who are actually doing the fighting. That's why, uh, for the most part, we have not ruled in or out any specific systems. We have tried to tailor our assistance to the phase of the fight the Ukrainians are in. So I, I don't have an announcement to make one way or the other about where we are on, on this or that Ukrainian uh, ask. We will be uh, discussing this very carefully uh, as we do all assistance decisions with the Ukrainians and, and uh, we'll be tailoring our assistance to what, they, what we believe they need and what they believe they need uh, for the phase of the fight that they're in. All right, Principal Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer, thank you very much for coming on this morning.